Welcome to South Sound Seniors, a program for and about older adults in our community. I am really excited. This is one of our Senior Action Network shows, but before we meet our great guests, I want to thank everybody here at Thurston County Media, the volunteers and the staff who make it possible for us to put this show together each month. So thanks, Thurston County Media. We love you. So today we have two Senior Action Network members, Lark Church mm -hmm. and Tasha, remind me of your last name, your McNeely. McNeely. I was going to say McNeil, so I'm glad I asked. Close. McNeely. And now you're here to talk and educate me about skilled nursing facilities. So mm -hmm. let's establish that you both work at one. Yes. Correct. And so yes. Lark, what's your job title and where do you work? I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing for Ruland Healthcare Center in Lacey. Okay. And Tasha, how about you? I am the Admissions Director for Manor Care of Lacey. All right. And how long have you been at your respective jobs? I've been with Ruland a little over a year now. Okay. Okay. And I've been in my position for about two years. Okay. So relatively new to these positions, but I think you've both been in the field for a while. Yes. Right? Yeah, well, great. Thanks for coming in. So I know at Senior Action Network, even the group of, what, 60 or 75 people that gather every month for our meetings were confused about some of the things that happen at skilled nursing facilities. So mm -hmm. somebody start out by telling me what is a skilled nursing facility? You want to take that first question? Sure. Yeah. So a skilled nursing facility is a building or a collection of buildings where people can receive long-term care or short-term rehab. So long-term care is exactly like it sounds. People who need a little bit or need more help um, than they can have at home and they live with within a skilled nursing facility mm -hmm. pretty much for the rest of their ever. Generally mm -hmm. it's long-term care. Mm -hmm. For short-term rehab is also exactly like it sounds. It's people who need a little bit more physical or occupational therapy before they are safe to return back to their homes. And so they're getting help with the therapies mm -hmm. to be able to return. And that's usually like a month, two months? Yep, generally it can, so. be, it can be anywhere between, um, it can be anywhere between five days to generally a hundred days. Okay, great. Okay, Lark, and so who might be the client that would be considering or looking into a SNF? Well, skilled nursing facilities or SNFs, like we uh -huh. say in the industry, um, we have several different types of clients. Most of the referrals that we both get are from hospitals. Mm -hmm. When someone's been admitted to the hospital because they've had an injury or an illness, pneumonia, long-term pneumonia, or a stroke, or perhaps a fractured hip, or something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. that will often be the reason that they'll come for a short-term rehab stay okay. at a skilled nursing facility. Mm -hmm. uh, also, SNFs do short-term stays just for what's called respite care, but we can talk about that later. Okay. So, I think your point of saying, I said SNF, so that's yes. a skilled nursing facility, mm -hmm. a lot of people would think kind of in the old language, there's a nursing home, mm -hmm. a care facility, convalescent care, some mm -hmm. of those are all interchangeable, but the technical term is skilled, skilled nursing, nursing facility. facility. Yes. Okay. Right. So, kind of brings it down to people, I think, have a general idea that being in a skilled nursing facility is pretty expensive. So how is it paid for? So depending on the patient, um, it can either be paid through Medicare if you have a qualifying stay in the hospital, so a three midnight inpatient stay in the hospital, and your doctor says that you need more help, you need skilled care afterwards, mm -hmm. that will qualify somebody, and then Medicare will pay for up to 100 days. Mm -hmm. Days one through 20 are paid at 100% by Medicare. Days 21 through 100 are paid at 80% by Medicare, and that leaves $170.50 left over. Now, generally, people have either a coinsurance, a supplemental insurance to help boost their Medicare, that will pay for some or all of that, or they can pay for that out of pocket, a private pay portion. 
Um, and so that's that's Medicare. Also, they can have people can have commercial insurances. So if you don't qualify for Medicare or don't have a managed care plan of some kind, then you've got a commercial insurance, and they will pay for skilled nursing care depending on the type of plan that you have, and they'll do it in stages. It, they'll authorize you to be in the facility for a little while, and then we send them notes about your skilled care, meaning your nursing and your therapy, and then your insurance company can decide to give us a few more days to work with you because you're still making progress, or they can say, nope, I think you're at your new baseline and your new normal, so you are ready to discharge home. Okay, and then I assume people can also pay privately. Yes but it is a little expensive. It is quite expensive. In this region, we're looking anywhere between uh, 10 and $14,000 per month for um, room and board and care. Okay, and then there's also Medicaid, which we heard a little bit about in the Medicaid program and one of our former programs when we had um, part of the Senior Action Network team that helped people navigate Medicaid in their lives. So mm -hmm. that's primarily for people who are low income and need help from public assistance to pay for their time. Yes, and right. generally there's a share of cost, uh -huh. but it really depends on what your base income level is, whether or not you will have a share to, to pay for the services there. Right, wow. Okay, well, where do you find information about if you need a skilled nursing facility, how do you find out what's a good one to go to? Well, there's a lot of different ways. Um, I think the Area Agency on Aging mm -hmm. is a great place to start. That's actually probably the main place that I start people in the direction of. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also go to the Department of Social and Health Services, the DSHS website, mm -hmm. and look uh, for reviews or reports. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I would say, the state website is a good place to go. Um, the other places, Google, Yelp, all those things, are not always so reliable in mm -hmm. their reviews, but the state does a really uh, thorough evaluation of all of the facilities in, mm -hmm. in the state, and so that's a good place. But I, I say that the Area Agency on Aging is a good place to start. Mm -hmm. They can give you a list, and they'll probably tell you, do your homework. Mm -hmm. I've, I'm sure you have as well, have had many people come and visit and mm -hmm. say, I just want to look around and learn a little bit more about you and see if this is a fit for the re rehabilitation stay or long-term care stay of my loved one. Right. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Yes, the website nursinghomecompare.gov is definitely a good place to go. You can search all of the nursing homes per county, per city, per block radius, and that will give you a really good um, oversight of what all of the different facilities in that selective area can do for you. Mm -hmm. Great. Wonderful. Yeah. So do, I, I always wonder, do people think far enough ahead, like say they're going <laughs> into a, for a surgery and they probably know they're going to need more care after the surgery. Do you ever have anybody come in and kind of look around for themselves, not for a family member? Yes, thankfully, thankfully, I definitely do have that. Um, people planning ahead, people thinking that, well, just maybe, you know, uh -huh. if, you have, if you have a knee replaced, the average grocery bag can weigh 10, up to 10 pounds, mm -hmm. and the parking, the average distance of your parking spot to the front door of, your gro of the grocery store is 606 feet. So if you've got a knee replaced, you're now carrying at least one 10-pound bag and trying to walk 606 feet right off the bat. It's not always successful. The average single person does four loads of laundry a week. Being able to get up and down and sideways as you're manipulating and maneuvering yourself in your home, you might not be ready for that right after a surgery of any kind or even just a hospital stay. Mm -hmm. And so what skilled nursing means for people is the ability to go home, be successful, mm -hmm. and have less chance of having to go back to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So planning ahead, if you've got a planned surgery, mm -hmm. do it. Go and tour places. Yeah. Go and think about what might be better for you. And heck, ask your friends to bring you dinner for a few <laughs> weeks and keep it in the freezer so you don't have to worry so much about it and pay the neighbor's kid to come do some laundry yeah. or something like that. Um, but yeah, planning ahead is a really big part, would help out a lot of people every day. Yeah. So Lark, you said something earlier about respite. What, how does that come into skilled nursing facility? Well, respite care is available in assisted living facilities, in memory care facilities, 
and also skilled nursing facilities. M most of the respite care that we see in, you're probably similar to me as far as this regard, uh, Tasha, are individuals who um, are at home, living at home with some care from a professional caregiver, but the spouse or family member is doing the, the majority of the in-home care, feeding, laundry, um, and some other possible assistance like bathing and whatnot. Um, however, that also locks that family mem member into the house and they can never leave. They can never go anywhere for more than even a day, if even a day. So everyone needs a break. That's, um, that's a lot of work. So respite care is kind of what the word respite is defined, de the definition of respite, which is give yourself a break. You know, take a respite from the work and the stress of taking care of somebody. And uh, we, at, at our facility, we'll do respite care for five days or longer. I don't know how long your minimum, do you have a minimum stay? We don't have a minimum stay. Medicare generally pays for five respite days a month. Mm -hmm. And so there are some people that block it out where you come for the last five days of the month and the first five days of the month and then ah. Medicare pays for the whole 10 days of ah, that time period. Clever. Mm -hmm. So that can work. Um, a lot of people, a lot of my respite patients are hospice patients mm -hmm. uh, and they just need a place to stay for a little while while family members get a break, as Lark said, or they go to a wedding right. or they just, they need some time away. Yeah, yeah, and that's another uh, thing that we. There's a lot more information on the hospice stays and uh, Providence Home Care and Hospice and Assured Home Care and Hospice. They can provide a lot of information on how hospice works. Mm -hmm. um, yes, because we both get a lot of hospice clientele as well. Yeah. Okay. So we're kind of coming to the end of our time. So is there a piece of advice that you could give someone or their family that's looking? at skilled nursing care? My advice is don't be shy. Talk about it. Talk about what your life could potentially look like if you fall and break a hip, if you have to have a knee replaced or a shoulder replaced. Personally, we I end up talking with talking with my husband and talking with my parents about this on a regular basis of, oh, by the way, if something like this happens, this is what we should you know, be prepared for. Mm -hmm. um, because we're never prepared if we don't actually talk about it and have these open conversations that discuss what we want in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so talk about it. Go and take a tour, talk about what you like, what you don't like. No mm -hmm. one facility is gonna fit every one person. That's why there's multiple of us. And yeah. we all have our niches and we all just wanna do our best to serve everyone. Yeah, absolutely, that's, that's great advice. And I, I think the other part that's important too is, in addition to the conversation is, we're not the nursing homes of the movie Cocoon. No. We're not <laughs> the nursing homes of the 1950s or 60s or even the 70s. Uh, skilled nursing facilities today are much farther advanced. We have much more to offer. Um, we take care of much more complex yes, patients. Yes, exactly. And it's not, um, w we do everything we can to make the quality of life of everyone that stays with us the best it could possibly be. Yeah. Provide a home-like environment so people can live happily mm -hmm. in their new homes if need be, or a temporary home if they're going to their real homes again. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming in, and I think it hopefully is making it less scary for people to think about that. I really appreciate it. I hope so. Thanks for coming in, and maybe you'll come back if we get some more questions. Okay. I'd be glad to. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Aileen. You bet. We done.